Hello everyone and welcome to another Paris Set Me Free photo appreciation video. I haven't been doing these for a while, I've been concentrating on my my mini videos. There's, I've just done 60 of those so there's plenty to look at but uh, it's good to be back on the longer ones. You might not agree but here we go. I've got Tam from Scotland. I was born in Scotland so fellow kinsman although I haven't got the accent and he's a Paris fanatic like me. He doesn't actually live here yet but he's been here 11 times in the last little while so you can see how keen he is and he's a great photographer as well and I asked him I'm not going to say he asked me, I asked him to allow me to talk about five of his photographs which I thought would be interesting for us to do. This one is in Montmartre and he's been to he's done quite a few in Montmartre as as have we all I think and it's a cute little restaurant that has really gone over the top to look cute. Let me just show you where it is. I'm not going to do this with every photograph but I will do it with this. There's Paris Let's head down to, head up I should say, to uh, Montmartre, the classic. This is where Sacré-Cœur is and it's just around the corner from Sacré-Cœur, just around the corner from that artist's square, um, Place du Théâtre, and it's on this street here. So let's see if I can get down there reasonably quickly and show you what it looks like in reality, in real life and yeah so they have really gone over the top on this one it's next to this building with these lovely blue shutters uh, there it is changed slightly I think I think I've changed the window since Tam's shot have a look at that or yeah uh, or maybe he took it before I don't know you've got that sort of arched window which doesn't seem like it opens and then in Tam's shot lo and behold uh, the windows are open and you've got all these wine bottles uh, I looked up this place on trip something or other and it was funny because I found two, well there were a lot of reviews, two of the, the five star ones I read were saying it was wonderful, countryfied, gorgeous, rustic, cute, all the rest of it, homely. And then right next to them were two one star reviews saying it's a disaster, everyone's crammed in, you're next to the toilets, the food's all for the, the service was, was unpleasant. So, you know, is it the place or is it the people? Anyway. That's another philosophical question. So in terms of the photograph, what have we got here? Uh, I just wanted to say as well, uh, especially after some comments I'm seeing from certain parties on some of my videos, not very many, that seem to suggest that I think that I know what I'm doing <laughs> and that maybe possibly I know better than others. Well, that isn't really the case. And what I do is, not I call these video appreciations on purpose not I think I've stopped calling them video critiques because of the negative connotations of that what I do is I look at people's photographs and I enjoy them primarily I say why I like them and then I I make suggestions on other things that you could do it's as simple as that it doesn't go any further I'm not saying this is awful you should have done that never saying that it's your photographs not mine and if you like them they're a success as far as I'm concerned so what have we got here anyway well we've got we've got a shot where he's actually done something which we're not aware of straight away in order to to make this better he didn't want people in I think he wanted a very straightforward record shot timeless if you like and he said he wanted it straight on but looking through that door there uh, there were some people probably wearing modern clothes and he didn't want that and the second reason is he didn't want to disturb them during the meal so he took it from the side so he's made this photograph better in by his definition straight away by uh, not having the people there although he did say that later on as he got older and bolder he would probably uh, just just take the shot anyway it's a pretty straightforward shot he hasn't you know colors are gorgeous uh, but he hasn't really done anything too personalized to it it's it's a shot of this cute little building let's move on to the next one place I'm very fond of it's Palais Royal which was uh, Cardinal Richelieu's palace which he built opposite the Louvre to um, annoy the king and make him jealous possibly and there's this uh, modern sculpture it's these globes and as Tam says uh, he shot this originally on colour slide film the spheres remind him of uh, planets 
and the most difficult thing he was trying to do was not see his own reflection in there. I've got a feeling that might be him there. It's a bit difficult to see at this size, but looks like a couple of hands being held up with a camera in them. <laughs> I might be completely wrong on that, but uh, anyway, <laughs> it's quite funny. I've often taken shots of myself in these, trying to get myself in as many of them as possible for my my self-portrait watch me getting older and uglier blog, which is called um, My Mystic Me, if you want to check that out. So he's done the opposite. He didn't want that. But he has got these people here, and it's nice. It's a nice little trail of people. They've all got their legs in a kind of upside-down V position, so it's kind of cute, a bit like elephants, uh, trailing one after the other. Another final point on this, two points actually. One is, when you've got this repetition of a really amazing shape, uh, try to fill the frame with it. I mean, which is exactly what he's done. He's got in really close. You could even have filled in this by, by taking in some more of the others, which are up this way. Maybe he's gone for this nice diagonal here. I don't know. Fill the frame with a repeating pattern. Well, patterns, I guess, do repeat. And you've got a very, very strong shot. And you don't need anything. You don't need any uh, bits of uh, ground here or, if it, I don't know, if it were perfume bottles. You don't need bits of the counter, you know, literally, absolutely fill it. You've, you, the shot is a pattern, the pattern is the theme. Second comment I'd make here is, in terms of the exposure, now I've got to be careful because my screens are notoriously out of sync with each other. Uh, if I move this over to another screen, it would look completely different. Uh, having said that, I've got a feeling it's slightly, it could be brighter. I'm not saying it's underexposed because, you know, you obviously probably know what you wanted, but also this is kind of compounded because it's in black and white. Black and whites really scream out for having some blacks, real blacks, and some real whites. And we've, we haven't we have really got too many. There's, there's potential with clouds to have some really, you know, bright, dazzling whites. You've just got the tingy, tingy edges are white. And this, this bit here, the shadows, they're kind of dull. Uh, if they were pure black, and maybe this is what comes from converting from colour, they're not really true black, but you can change that afterwards. I would I would guess, because I know this air at this place, you've got tons of these pure mirables looking at a massive canopy of sky there. I think this shot is a very, very bright shot in reality, so I would uh, brighten it up personally. Let's look at the next shot. And uh, what is it? What have we got here? We've got a arch in Pigal. Uh, he says, shot through an iron fence on my Nikon D80. Nikon, huh? Nice. Originally a colour file, this little garret close to the Moulin Rouge would make an ideal crash pad for me. Right on, Tam. Slumming it, I know, but what can you get for three million these days? <laughs> That's right, yeah. I'm going to make a comment with this one that I'm going to make with the next one as well. So I'm going to show you these two together. Have a look at this shot, have a look at the next one, and guess what I'm going to say? Beautiful, huh? This is one of the most beautiful streets in all of Paris, as far as I'm concerned. It's Rue de la Brevoire, up in uh, Montmartre. Let me, uh, yeah, I'll show you where that is in a minute. But uh, have a look at these two shots again, then. What comment am I going to make? Well, let me help you out here. Take the bottom half of this shot and just tell me what it is. Literally, draw a line from here. I think the bottom half is approximately here. Draw a line and tell me what that is. And then, take the bottom third of this shot which starts at about this line here, the bottom of the lamppost, and draw it across. What have we got? Well, we've got road, and we've got road, or pavement. In a shot of a landscape, what is nearest to you is at the bottom of the shot, generally. And you could say, because it's nearer to you, it's, it's larger, it's more dominant, so that's why half of his shot here is the thing that's nearest to us, is nearer than the, the half that's above. So we give it more importance as well. And if you're not careful, you give all of that space and that importance, i.e. the bottom half or the bottom third of the shot, to a big fat nothing. You can see it there, you can see it here. It's all very well having this beautiful curvy road, but what what's going on here? Why is the bottom third of the shot these little brick things? I'm not, I'm not being derogatory or anything. I'm just saying, watch out for that. Uh, and the answer is a person. The answer is a person or a dog, hopefully in silhouette, because otherwise they'll detract and people will think it's a picture of the person. But you don't want a picture of a, of a certain person, you want a picture of any person. And the way to get any person, or 
someone who could be anyone is to go for silhouettes just a black shadow I didn't have time to look through my stuff for exactly that but I do have it and I would probably reject um, a shot which didn't have anyone in over a shot which had a black silhouetted person in the foreground to give it some interest uh, same with this one what would have been ideal would have been a, a dog going across here or possibly even even closer the closer it gets the bigger it gets relatively speaking or seems to all right so uh, anyway in terms of the composition apart from that I, I would probably have chopped off this and just gone for the arch as the shot probably kept it on the left indeed because this is nice this bit here you got a harder blacks here and um, arches are fantastic for framing and what are you framing well you're framing a beautiful building with a beautiful s staircase and the staircase the curve of it here echoes the curve of the top of the of the arch not top of the arch the arch a gorgeous uh, double double sort of um, crescent staircase here very nice indeed and a statue which is gives it interest but the statue's getting lost you see it so far so in, so I'd, I'd probably chop off that bottom bit and you've also got the, the light is coming through and showing off this jagged edge here which is very very beautiful as well uh, in terms of the the Montmartre one uh, the pig the um, Rue de la Brevoix let me just show you what it looks like in reality if I can find it okay that's that yeah this is on a square called uh, Place Dalida Dalida was a very famous singer in France and somewhere somewhere else wherever she came from maybe Cyprus and no one else has ever heard of her well none of my um, photo tour people anyway but uh, she's um, she's an impressive lady as you can see from that and uh, she's got an extremely in-your-face grave in um, Montmartre in the Montmartre cemetery as well it's really amazing uh, almost as though she's some sort of goddess anyway if you turn round on this beautiful little corner oh look that's um, the uh, Allée des de Brouillards the Misty Alley gorgeous isn't it that's going right the way down to the other side of Montmartre this place is just absolutely beautiful and then here is Tam's shot hey you stole it you stole it from Google it's not your shot at all <laughs> uh, no, that's not true. You waited till the uh, thing had got you've you've photoshopped out the. Uh, no, I'm joking. Okay, so there it is. We've got this uh, this shot. Hang on, I'm just all right. Let me just get rid of uh, bloody Google. It's messing me up. So, what you've done here, apart from the fact that yeah, it'd be nice to have uh, someone here, is you've d you've performed a miracle. There is no big white van in this parking place, which I think there's some sort of early warning system when I approach Montmartre, and a whole bunch of guys in big white vans go out to place themselves strategically to ruin all my beautiful postcard shots and uh, there is always I guarantee you always a white van here on the most beautiful street in Paris so you haven't got one and you've got a nice car which is nicely shaded and and it's even in black and white so you, it maybe it's bright pink for all I know but it's very very subtly done now you've done something here which I think is excellent well two great things here very often these get blown out in the sky because don't forget this is Sacre Coeur, uh or at least one of them is and um, and uh, because it's pale and this sky is very pale obviously often this just gets lost and you haven't done that so that's that's one one good point and the second point is this curve what makes this street so wonderful and sexy almost is this s you see the s it goes zoom 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 boom 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 and uh, what I see a lot of people doing is taking the shot if you imagine this bit this stretch here which is the longest stretch imagine that continuing this way to about this corner here they take the shot from there they're looking straight down there and they've lost two of the curves if you imagine they've just got a straight this one is going straight into the shot with a little bit of a turn off there and a turn off there and they've lost the S so you haven't done that you've positioned yourself to get one bend, two bends, and three bends with four sections, duh, 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 which is exactly what you need because um, because it's all about angles. These are only angles, these are only diagonals in relation to the sides of the photograph, aren't they? To the sides of the frame. So you've got to watch out what is happening with the sides of the frame. And if you're standing here, you've got with this section of 
road, you'd have one bit of it there, one bit of it there, and no diagonals at all. Right, great, good stuff, black and white, gorgeous. Who can say fairer than that? And here's the last one. We're here, and we're looking at this, this absolutely classic, beautiful Art Nouveau, in a beautiful English accent, metro entrance. One of the classic Guimard metro entrances. And it's funny because in your first photograph of of this place, uh, it's called Pulbo, which uh, you rightly suggested is a street urchin. But what happened was the the order in which it came was the guy Pulbo, uh, I think, uh, invented this character, who was a street urchin, and then the street urchins got called Pulbos if you see what I mean. So he came first, the guy came first, created a character, the character then became the generic name for all the street urchins of those times. And so what is funny is that in the last shot we're looking at, your uh, beautiful shot of this, which is a gorgeous, uh, rich sepia interpretation of one of the most beautiful metro stations in Paris, you've um, uh, right next to it is, would you believe it, I believe this uh, this character, this pool ball character. I'm trying to trying to get trying to get it for you so we can see it, but obviously, yeah, there we go. He's he's kind of hidden there, hidden away there behind the uh, behind the thing. But that's no, I can't I can't get him there. Yes, you see, maybe I can get closer. So this is the little street urchin guy who had stories written about him and it's right next to the uh, the last photograph that I'm looking at here from you. So uh, let's talk about this a little then. What you've done is taken a straight on shot and you've filled the frame and you've turned it sepia and you've made a great deal, deal of effort to make this absolutely symmetrical. You see there's the same distance there as there. These are all uh, perfectly aligned You've even got the lamppost in there, not chopped off. I hate things that are chopped off that are important, and you haven't. And uh, it's gorgeous. You have chopped off the top of this, uh, I guess, in order to make it big and impressive in the in the picture. And you've also chopped this, the abess word. Now these are compositional decisions to make, and sometimes you just can't get everything in. If you'd step back one pace, you'd probably not have chopped the abess and been able to get the top of that in as well. I don't know why you didn't and I haven't got a clue if, if that's exactly what you wanted to do then there's no nothing else to talk about. I don't tell you what your photographs are supposed to be like. I would tend to um, probably try and get all of this in and it's very impressive when it's straight on Another option, which you may well have, have done as well, is to take it from the side. And if you look at this, okay, it's Google. I'm afraid I didn't do do my work, do my homework, and uh, I'm just trying to get this. I didn't do my homework and get you a shot of mine to illustrate what I'm talking about. But if you take it from the side, and a lot of people don't do this, take it from the side, get in close, and you have this thing towering over your head in the top left of the picture. And then you have, and the beautiful metropolitan writing, then you have this abess sign down in the bottom right. And a lot of people who have been on my Mamatra tour will know that I, I get them to take a shot spontaneously. Very often it's it's pretty straight on. And then I say, well, take from this side, this angle, get in close, wide angle lens, this one top left, but not chopping off the edge, this one bottom right, and you've got a repetition of the the, the colours of yellow, the writing, this is a beautiful thing with the lines splaying out into this top left hand corner and occasionally what is really amazing uh, is that on this I think it's on this picture here you've got a picture of this metro station and if you move to about where this lady in pink is you can actually get this the real thing plus the the Pulbo metro thingy uh, in the same shot again repetition I love it um, I think that's about it what did uh, our friend Tam say, he said, uh, okay, another color digital file changed to black and white in Nikon's picture, da da, sepia toned, uh, taken in a rare moment alone. Don't know if, if I should say this, uh, the lady in his life, he doesn't use that term actually, funnily enough, I think that's what he means, had gone back to the hotel and 
Ah, here we go, here we go. I had a problem getting far enough back without stepping on the road and getting high enough to get everything I wanted in. The photo. Hey, you see, it it um, it um pays to read the instructions sometimes. It was around 5 p.m. I'm talking about me reading what he actually said before blah blahing about it. So I had to wait for an opportunity to take the shot without people. The other option is to get a kind of enigmatic figure coming out of the, the metro, which is sometimes what I do. I often do that and I'll put it on, I might put it on a fairly slow shutter speed, but one that I can still handhold. I don't know, what a 30th or or even a 15th or pos, no, 60th probably isn't enough, especially as they're coming out of the metro towards you. So you've got a blur, you've got a person using the metro, it's a blur. You don't know who it is, but it's a user of the metro, because that's what the metro is there for. And it's always nice to have someone showing you why the thing you're photographing exists. So that's it. Uh, I'll leave it there. No idea how long this is, hopefully not too long. Thanks very much for all those superb shots, Tam. Really appreciate you sending them to me. I enjoyed looking at them. I enjoyed talking about them. I hope you did too. I hope you enjoyed listening to me. And uh, if anyone else wants to send in uh, between three and five photographs of Paris, I will happily talk about them. Also, I have a new competition. It's called the uh, the International Paris Street Photography Competition. Uh, go to my Facebook page if you want. It's uh, facebook.com slash Paris if you please. And uh, enter. Enter three shots per month. You can win a Nikon camera. Nikon, um, what's it called? Cool Pics, something like that. And I will give you a video on your photographs. I will also give somebody, one of the winners, a free Paris uh, street photography tour, uh, which is worth um, up to 400 euros. The camera is worth about 100. So please enter your photographs every month, three per month, and you might even win the big prize at the end of the year. That's it. Thanks a lot for watching. See you soon. Bye bye. Depuis que je suis à Paris, le jour et la nuit, je suis gris. J'ai compris la douceur de vivre, je suis fou de joie, je suis ivre. Depuis que je suis à Paris...